so I'd like you to imagine a world, a world where every text message you send, every email, every video you watch leaves behind an invisible toxic cloud. I would like for you to say that this is a dystopian sci-fi scene, my friends, but it isn't. It's happening right now. And this is the dark side of our digital obsession, which is choking our planet. We're all addicted to our devices, endless scrolling, countless notifications. It's quickly become the digital drug of our age. But just like any addiction, like any drug, it comes at a cost. That cost is far greater than the latest iPhone or the newest app. It's a cost which is costing our planet, and so it's really time we started to pay attention. The data center, and this is the backbone of our digital world. These vast facilities, they process everything from online shopping to scientific research. They're massive, massive facilities, which are often compared to sprawling warehouses and they contain countless servers that process vast amounts of data and information 24 hours a day. And whilst data centers are essential to our modern day lives, they are notorious energy guzzlers. And they're driving up the demand for energy consumption and electricity. The rapid growth of artificial intelligence has only intensified this energy crisis that we have. An artificial intelligence model, or AI, if you will, uses enormous amounts of computational power. What this does is it places an unprecedented strain on our data centers, which again drives up energy consumption and electricity. So artificial intelligence, an AI platform, in a single day will use as much energy or as much electricity as to power hundreds of refrigerators or charge perhaps dozens of electric cars. To put this into perspective, this is like the yearly energy consumption of a small town just to power one AI platform. But it isn't just the energy consumption that's a problem here. It's also the waste. When our devices stop working, when they become outdated, or we no longer need them, they don't just magically disappear. They end up as e-waste. Toxic mountains of discarded technology which pollute our land and leach harmful chemicals into our soil and water. The world, it generates over 50 million tons of e-waste each year. That's the equivalent of throwing away a thousand laptops every second. But yet only a small percentage of this is actually recycled correctly or properly. The tech giants are all now in this race for artificial intelligence dominance. And so they're all expanding their data centers rapidly. Right now, currently being built is a $1.5 billion data center on the outskirts of Salt Lake City in America. Once this facility is complete, it will generate as much electricity and use as much energy as a large nuclear reactor. Now these companies, they will say that they offset all of their emissions by using recyclable energy. But many critics, many critics argue this is just a shell game. They're simply purchasing the green energy for themselves, the limited supply of green energy, and leaving the rest of us to rely on fossil fuels. An industry insider recently put it, that is quickly becoming an issue for the tech giants. Their issue is, don't get left behind. So lock down the power that you need now and then figure out the climate issues afterwards. This is short-sighted. It's a very, very short-sighted approach and one which will only ever end in disaster. But the impact of digital pollution isn't just on the environment. It's also affecting all of our lives in new and profound ways. There's a constant stream of updates, the fear of missing out. There's a pressure to always be connected. This all takes a toll on our mental health. A lot of new studies are now showing a 
strong link between excessive screen time and both of that and a range of mental health issues. This is anxiety, depression, sleep disorders. And thus, the constant churn of updates and upgrades is driving us into a culture of consumerism, which leaves us feeling empty and unfulfilled. But it doesn't have to be this way. We can choose a different path, a path which is healthier for, for us and healthier for our planet. We could start by rethinking our relationship with technology. Do we really need to have the latest phone, the latest gadget? Can we make the ones that we have in our pockets or our purses last just that little bit longer? Could we choose to spend less time in the digital world and more time in the real world? We could also support developers who are building and writing sustainable software, software which is more energy efficient, less wasteful, designed to last longer. And perhaps we could even rethink our relationship with AI. We could look at AI as being part of our solution and not just a problem. In many regards, AI can help us manage our energy consumption. It can help us write sustainable software. And it can even help us rethink our relationship with technology and our digital lives. One artificial intelligence provider is actually already doing this. They're using AI to help cool their data centers. They've been doing this for a number of years now, and they've managed to cool their data center by around 40% every year. That's like taking a million cars off our road. So the future of our planet really depends on all of us to rethink our relationship with technology. We need to move away from a culture of mindless consumption and to a culture of conscientious choice. We need to demand more from the tech industry. We need to demand more from the tech giants. We need to support the companies, the engineers, and all of the people who are working to build us a cleaner digital world. The digital world doesn't have to be a toxic one. We can choose a different path, a path which is healthier for, for us and our planet. It's a choice that we need to make, but not just for ourselves, for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you.